Today, as we continue to learn about Earth sciences, we're going to study convection currents today. Now, to understand convection currents, we're going to have to do a demonstration. But I have a question for you. If you've ever been in a swimming pool or even a large body of water, I want to ask you, does the temperature feel the same at the top as it does at the bottom of the pool. Are the temperatures different? You'll notice that it's always a little bit warmer at the top of the pool than it is at the bottom of the pool. Why is that? Is there a difference between water being warm or being cool? Do they have a preference that warm, warm water wants to go to the top and Cool water wants to go to the bottom. To understand this concept a little bit better, let's start off with a demonstration. After watching that demonstration, we understand the concept of density a little bit better. Now back to water. Well, isn't water just water? Warm water and cold water? Can their densities be different? We're gonna do an experiment today that will teach us if warm water, cold water, and even room temperature water, do they all have the same density or different densities? Now to understand this concept a little bit better, I have an aquarium filled with water and we're going to do the sink or float test. I'm going to drop a few items in and let's see if they sink or if they float. We'll start off with a penny, very, very light penny. Let's see what happens. Will it sink or will it float? Easy, sunk straight to the bottom, even though it was so light. Let's try paper clip. Sunk straight to the bottom. Now I have two balls here. I'm going to drop these two into the water and see what happens here. Whoa. Well, that was different. One sank and one is floating. Hmm. Let's keep going. And now I have two cans of soda. Let's see what these do. Whoa, well that's weird again, right? What's going on here? The Coca-Cola Zero is floating and the Coca-Cola Regular sunk to the bottom. Now let's see if we can understand what happened here. The first thing that was surprising were the two balls. These two balls look identical, but are they identical? They're not. They have the same size. That means their volume is the same. They take up the same amount of space, but their mass is different. Let's check out their mass. I have a balance here. I'll put one ball on one side and the other one here. Are they balanced? They're not. They are different masses. This has more mass than this one, making it more dense. The word density refers to how much mass and volume an object has. This object has more mass than this object, but the volumes are the same. Now what about these two? These are identical cans, They're the same size. Neither one is open, they're both sealed. They both feel about the same mass, but why is one sinking and one floating. 
remember one is regular Coke and one is Coke Zero. Let's do the mass test again. Okay, I have my two cans. I'm gonna put the Coke Zero on one side and the regular Coke on <laughs> one side. Well, isn't that something? Look at that. The Coke is heavier, but why? Why is this Coke heavier than this Coke? Well, little fun fact for you. The regular Coke has nine tablespoons of sugar, which have more mass than the fake sugar in the Coke Zero. Now, don't take this the wrong way. They are both bad for you. They are both bad for our health in their own ways. Sugar is bad, as is fake sugar, but great for science. Now, if I bring these two cans of Coke back, which one is more dense, which one is less dense? Remember, their volume is the same, but their mass is different. Look at that. sizes. They're exactly the same size cans. This has more mass than the Coke Zero. Now, we did the mass test. What about the volume test? Can we do that? I have two identical amounts of clay here. I measured them, I weighed them. These two weigh the same amount. Can you predict what's going to happen now? I'm going to first. Let's drop the first one in and see what it does. Sunk right away. And now let's try the second one. Did this one sink? No, it's floating. But how can that be? They're the same mass. What's different about them? Their volume. The amount of space that they take up is different. These two pieces of clay have the same mass, but their shapes are different. They take up different amounts of space. Their volume is different. For this lab, you will need two different colors of food coloring, red and blue. You will need an ice cube tray. You will need plenty of water. You will need either a quarter liter plastic container, or if you have a lot bigger, larger vase, and you will also need pipette and you will also need boiling water. The day before you start this experiment you're going to have to get some ice cubes ready. What you're going to do is pour water into a plastic cup, add food coloring to make it nice and blue, then you will need to fill an ice cube tray. We'll need three ice cubes. It's always better to make a little extra. Pop this into the freezer. 24 hours should be enough time. And once it's frozen, we'll be ready to go. Before we get started with the lab, you'll need a few minutes to make your hypothesis. The question I'm asking today is what happens to cold or hot water when it's placed in room temperature water? Remember what we learned about density. If cold water is either more dense or less dense than room temperature water, then what will happen? Will the cold water float or will it sink? So your question your choices are if cold water is more dense or less dense, you choose one. And then based on what you chose, you will write, will it float or will it sink? Remember, the Diet Coke was less dense and it was floating. The regular Coke was more dense, so it would sink. Make a second hypothesis for hot water. 
if hot water is more dense or less dense than room temperature water, then will it sink or will it float? After you have made your hypothesis, there is a series of steps that you can follow if you are using a small container, but I'm going to show you how I'm doing it in a larger vase. For part one, I have filled my vase with room temperature water. Now this is water that has been sitting on my counter for 24 hours just to ensure that it's not hot and it's not cold. What I'm going to do is take one of my ice cubes and you might ask why did we color the ice cube blue? Now remember, if I hadn't colored it blue, would I be able to see what's happening to it when I drop it in there? Water is colorless, it is clear. So to be able to see cold water and its behavior, we had to color it. Now my room temperature water is clear and colorless. I'm going to very gently just drop it in there and watch and see where is the cold water going. Is it, the ice cube is at the top, but where is the cold water going as the ice cube is melting? Remember that water is cold. As it melts, it is going to the bottom. Now the blue ice cube is almost all melted. And what do you notice? Where did all the blue colored cold water go? Do you see this line? It's like an anchor and it's like sinking all the way to the bottom and look at how blue it is down here. There's a little bit of blue starting to rise, but look, it, all the cold blue water is at the bottom. What can we say about cold water? Is it more dense or less dense than room temperature water? For part one, your observation needs to be stated in words, but this is what your drawings should look like. First, we have the ice cube that looks like it's melting and we saw that thread going all the way to the bottom. And notice I've labeled my ice cube. And once the ice cube melted, all of the blue cold water ended up at the bottom. And in the middle, I kept my room temperature water. I used RT as an abbreviation for room temperature. Go ahead and draw your observations. Now for the second part of this lab, let's try the same thing, but with hot water. Again, I have filled my vase with room temperature water. And here I have a glass filled with boiling hot water. Please make sure you have the help of an adult. And then now I'm going to add red food coloring to my hot water because remember, if water doesn't have a color, we won't be able to see it. Now in your enrichment bag, you have a syringe, excuse me, you have a pipette to help you. You can use a pipette or a syringe, either one. I'm actually going to make it a little bit more darker so I can see better. Now you have to be really careful when you're adding it. You don't want to squirt with the syringe in there. 
you want to add as gently as possible. Remember the ice cube just sat there and melted on its own. And you want to do the same thing with the boiling water. So I'm going to use my pipette to pick up the water. I'm going to go just to the edge, right above the water. And then I'm gently going to just squeeze out the red. What do you notice? Notice as I squeeze, it goes to the bottom because of the pressure and then it comes right back up again. Does it look like the hot water is more dense or less dense than the room temperature water? I'm going to try it with my syringe, see if I can get more out before my water cools. Harder to control with a syringe than the pipette. You can see it come back up. Well, look at that. There is no mistaking it. Look at all of the red staying at the very, very, very top. And there's none at the bottom at all. Here's the room temperature, clear water, and all the hot red water. Is hot water more dense or less dense than room temperature water? Now again, go ahead and write your observation in words and draw what you see, and as always, label. We saw at first the hot water go to the top, and after adding a lot more, well, it all stayed at the top. Room temperature at the bottom, hot water on top. Before we go to part three, go ahead, make a hypothesis what you think will happen once we have room temperature water, both hot water and cold water. So we're gonna use our second blue ice cube. We're going to add more hot water and we're going to have a fresh jar of room temperature water. Make a prediction. Now for this last part, I have a jar with fresh room temperature water. And this time I'm going to add one blue ice cube that represents my cold water. And I have red hot water that I'm going to add all at the same time. Let's start with our blue ice cube that I'm going to place in very gently. And the blue ice cube, as it melts, we see the cold water traveling down. Now, very, very carefully, I'm going to add the red hot water on the opposite side. Make sure when you're doing this, you are very careful that you don't Pour the water too fast. And you're just slow so that the water, the colors don't mix.
Now, as we look at this jar, what do you see? So clear, look at the red. Just right on top, nowhere else. Then the middle is clear and the bottom is blue. All staying exactly where it's supposed to. Now we're going to go ahead and draw our observations. But I want to ask you a question. What do you think will happen if I let this sit for a few hours? Think about that. Let's work on our observation. Now, if we want to draw our observations, first put your observations into words, but in the beginning, like we expected, the blue ice cube was melting and going all the way to the bottom. The red was hovering over the top. And after we left it for a few minutes, the cold was all the way at the bottom. The room temperature, which was the clear colorless water was in the middle and the red hot water on top. Now this phenomenon that we are observing right now is called convection currents. Convection currents is a term that describes how heat, hot water, rises as cold water sinks. Now, if we were to relate this back to density, what would you say about the hot water and the cold water and the room temperature water? The hot water was less dense than the room temperature water and the cold water was more dense than the room temperature water. And if we take out the room temperature water for just a minute and we just compare hot and cold water, hot water is less dense than cold water and cold water is more dense than hot water. Convection currents, you'll see a very simple diagram behind me. As water heats up, goes to the top, as it goes to the top, it cools down, comes back down and it becomes cold water. And you see this constant cycle of heat rising, cold cooling. Now, why does this happen? Remember, it has to do with density. The mass is not changing. What does change when water is heated or it's cooled down? The volume is what's changing hot water as water heats up it actually starts to take up more space remember my clay that i showed you guys in the demonstration it took up more space it had more volume as it changes its volume it becomes less dense the cold water does this something similar as water cools down, it also changes its shape, but it takes up less space. The volume changes, and that causes the density to increase. Hot water, less dense. Cold water, more dense. Now I asked you, what do you think would happen in a few hours if I left this? Would the hot water stay hot? Would the cold water stay cold? After a few hours, the cold water is probably going to increase in temperature and become the same as the room temperature. Now, why? Because we're in a room, there's no heat, there's no cold, nothing being added to this. And the hot water is going to change temperature and also become room temperature. Right now, it's really clear, the red, the blue, and the clear, it's really obvious. But in a few hours, the colors will all mix, the red and the blue will mix and turn into purple. Go ahead and try this experiment and you can leave your vase or your cup, whatever container you may have, leave it longer and watch what happens as the temperatures all turn to room temperature water.